Talk Nerdy is brought to you by its sponsor, AT&T, which provides IU students, faculty, and staff with personal cellular services at discounted rates. Talk Nerdy to Me, a conversation about technology's hottest topics at Indiana University and beyond. Welcome to Talk Nerdy to Me, a conversation about technology at IU and beyond. I'm your host, Janae Cummings, and with me as always are the Hermione and Ron to my Harry, Brendan Howell, and Liam Bowling. Welcome back from the holidays, guys. How's it going? It's going pretty good. Had pretty a good, good holiday. Holidays. Yeah. So Because it, it was full of presents that, and good stuff. That, plus I got to see all my family and friends and stuff, and it was just a good break. Nice. That's you awesome. were, you were, were you in Mexico? Yeah, I went to Mexico for a couple of days, but other than that, just a lot of, a lot of sleeping. You know, some presents too, but not as cool as some other people's presents. <laughs> Which we will get to uh, in a little bit. So as we discussed in the last episode, Liam was supposed to go to Las Vegas for CES 2016, and then we were going to talk about all the new hotness that he was lucky to see, but that did not work out, it's I understand. Last minute flight plans got really messed up. So, but. which is sucks for you and I guess the rest of us. But we're going to talk about all the new hotness that the other people saw and maybe a couple of ridiculous things too. So let's start with the cool stuff. The first, which surprises me to say, is the Chevy Bolt because I can't believe anything cool ever comes out of Chevrolet. But it has. It's an all-electric car, a promised range of 200 miles, and it's coming in under 30 grand after tax credits. So That'll be nice. I mean, the Chevy Volt was kind of expensive when it came out, which is why you don't see that many of them on the road probably. Right. Uh, but they were a sexy car. So this one I don't think is as sexy, but I mean. It's kind of a hatchback, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it's like, it, it does look nice, though. I mean, it has nice lines on the car, and so I think a lot of hatchbacks look very hippie-ish, and this one doesn't. So It's kind of right. cool how they like beat Tesla to the punch of like the less than $40,000 car. All electric and everything. So that's, For sure, that's but it is cool. less is not as sexy as oh, not at all. What no. those gonna what those are gonna be? But I mean, it also has it has great features like a real camera, surround vision, mm-hmm. Android Auto, and uh, Apple CarPlay, pre integrated with your smartphone. Like that's all the kind of stuff we need. Yeah, I don't think any other cars really have that surround vision besides BMW. At least I haven't seen them in any other cars. So. Well, and I think the i three, it can't go two hundred miles. I don't think I think the range is mm-hmm. pretty poor. Well, not poor, but I mean pretty mediocre. Yeah. yeah. So. I, I haven't seen that many of those floating around either. I mean, I've seen like one or two, but they came I've out. seen one on campus. Oh, really? Usually in oh. a handicapped spot, which I find kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> what is a car that BMW came out with that's also like a hybrid? It's um, much more expensive than the i3. I'm not sure. I think I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but that one is sexy. Yeah, that, that's a good looking car. Yeah. But. What I saw, though, um, there was some Tesla shade also. We were talking about Tesla Tesla a second ago. Um, Chevy noted that they still believe in the dealer model, which obviously we know Mm -hmm. Tesla doesn't, and um, (laughs) and also that customers won't have to drive to another state to get their car serviced, which... Wow. Yeah. Run punches. Yeah. <laughs> it's a deep blow. Yeah. It's a deep blow. But, I mean, there, there are other stuff that's going to go on with the car, but we won't know until the Detroit Auto Show, which I'm, I'm actually curious to see, which I wouldn't normally care about, but yeah. that could actually be pretty cool. So, you think you might get one? Me? Anyone? I don't I mean, I s- it's a little out of my price range for right now, but maybe yeah. one day. I'm still, I'm still killing the earth with my Jeep, so I plan to do that <laughs> for many more years. The that's Tesla cool. had that um, recently, I think it was like the Tesla Summon feature what was it they they just like demoed it or something yeah and it will come like, to you right yeah yeah and it just like parks itself in your garage i, I mean if Elon must want to get back at them he could just be like well did your car you know drive itself and park itself but <laughs> i think it's we'll funny see. that <laughs> we had that whole conversation about artificial intelligence and how elon musk was so against it or warning everyone about it but yet tesla's become more and more artificially yeah. intelligent so no they absolutely have but i think he's also putting forth research to make sure the ai he creates doesn't turn around and kill us so it's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a benevolent, benevolent AI, I guess. <laughs> so next on the car front is Faraday Futures FF01, which is a purely theoretical beast, total concept car. Um, it looks like the Batmobile. It's supposed to have 1,000 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 3 seconds, um, 200 mile per hour top speed. It would be a Tesla killer if it existed, if it could actually be street legal. Probably not in the U.S. We, oh, don't, no. we don't have an Autobahn to drive on. Yeah, so. no, absolutely. <laughs> there was so much hype behind that car. It was absurd. All the YouTube videos, like all the tech press going over like, oh, what's the Faraday car? And it's not even real. It's like, not real. <laughs> and it seems just to be a, a hype machine for 
the um, billion dollar factory they're going to build in Nevada, yeah. which could be really interesting. Um, because I think what I saw is that the car was more f- focusing on the flexibility, like the the system flexibility. Of yeah, the car. like the chassis mm-hmm. can be like a any type of car. Yeah, it's like almost that. modular. It's customizable. If you need a different size battery mm-hmm. pack or whatever, like they can do that for you. Um, and I think with this business model, users can almost subscribe to a plan. Like customers can subscribe to a plan um, that gives you a, the kind of car that suits your needs. Oh wow! Which is actually that's pretty awesome. That's kind of cool. This is just a one-seater car, right? I think so. Yeah, so a one-seater like fake car. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but the Not website's like so legitimate. Like it looks so good, and they've yeah. done a good job with it. But it does look like the Batmobile. It does. It does. What's also cool about it? They said their market was U.S. and China. Um, which makes t- sense, but they're all, they're partnering with a uh, Chinese electronics company called LATV. They make smartphones, um, connected TVs, that kind of thing, and mm-hmm. they're trying to use that as their entry into certain markets. So they're fueling us, almost funding it on partnerships. It's interesting. I know it's, a, it's an interesting take. I mean, how well are they doing with partners? I mean, they're building a billion-dollar factory, so obviously they must be doing But largely, you know? I think, supported by this LATV. I haven't seen anything about American manufacturers or more westernized mm-hmm. manufacturers doing anything. And probably because they know that it wouldn't, like you said, be street legal here, so right. they don't really see a market for it in the U.S. Right, right. I, I think they'll find that like mass-producing cars is a lot more difficult than they think. Like Tesla's hitting all these road bumps of you know cars catching on fire, some other things, and mm-hmm. um, things that Toyota and the other car companies have learned like a little while ago. So, Plus, this one's a one-seater, and mm-hmm. America yeah, is usually weird. very family-oriented. <laughs> yeah. so. It seems more like a billionaire's <laughs> plaything. Every, once, yeah. every couple yeah. years, they'll come out with five or ten. I remember a few years ago, Aston Martin's 177. I think they produced 177 of them. <laughs> and if you had one point whatever million dollars, you could have one, and then yeah. they were done. And so I can see something like this happening if they ever – Produce something. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That isn't a hologram or whatever that was. <laughs> <laughs> so next, that was pretty big at CES were the wearables. And I think after last year, people expected to see less wearable tech at CES. Mm-hmm. I mean, they haven't. Wearables overall, apart from like the Apple Watch and, and Fitbits, haven't really taken off. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, fitness aside. But this year offered a different take, and the four that really stood out to me were Wisewear Smart Jewelry, which is a personal attack alarm that sends a person's location and an SOS message to any emergency contacts. There was L'Oreal's My UV Patch, which is a sticker that you wear um, that monitors your exposure to sunlight. Um, Owlet came out with a smart baby sock that monitors newborn's vital signs to prevent SIDS. And a company called Oh My Bod has the Love Life Crush, which is a smart Kegel exerciser. Um, <laughs> Which I guess we can all giggle a little bit. Uh, but a Kegel <laughs> exerciser that helps women strengthen their PC muscles, and those frequently weaken due to age and childbirth. So um, it seems like instead of having products that are doing all the things, we're getting products now that do one thing and do them really, really well. I think a lot of the, at least from this year, the focus on the wearables was really health oriented mm-hmm. and having. I guess, like, a purpose for them. I mean, we all have the Apple Watches and all the Moto 360 watches and stuff, and they're kind of supposed to be, like, a do-all for your phone, but they don't have, like, one purpose like these items yeah. do. So. It is interesting seeing them move away kind of from the watch idea to more, you know, like, jewelry, patches, things like that. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's interesting. I think these are the kind of wearables that can really, really take off. You know, yeah. particularly if we're talking about health and safety, people want those and yeah. the kind of development that can go into those, monitoring maybe your vital signs and that kind of thing. Yeah, and plus um, their disguise is like everyday things that you would wear anyway, which makes it a lot easier to incorporate them into your, your outfits and whatnot. Right, particularly so. the wise wear, which mm-hmm. just is kind of like costume jewelry that's smart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that's something that I think most people would really like to take advantage of, particularly women, of course. Yeah, mm-hmm. even Fitbit kind of, kind of did that with a... Um, they partnered with, I think, with Tory Burch, and they came out with little, like, different, I guess, wristlets or whatnot to put the Fitbit into right. so that women could still wear them, but it was kind of disguised as a piece of jewelry. Yeah, I saw a couple of those on Instagram a few weeks ago. Some celebrities had them, and they, mm-hmm. I mean, they looked kind of cool. I mean, they weren't half bad at all. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm, interesting to see where, I'm interested to see where this goes. It's, it's pretty exciting that we're actually getting things, I think, specifically for things in our lives instead yeah. of trying to find... I don't know, devices that are trying to find reasons to wear these devices. Yeah. And there were quite a few of them that came out at once. I, I want to see which one is going to last and actually stay around and develop like another model or whatnot. So 
CES has awesome things. It also had really dumb things. <laughs> um, we saw a Bluetooth controlled blender. <laughs> that is, I, I just think it's the worst idea I've ever heard. I mean, it's like you're going to put your, you know, the contents you want to blend and then just wait. Like, you know, oh, I'll just do it when I'm at work or something. It's like, I, I, I don't get it. The vegetables and things are just going to rot all day. It doesn't make any sense to me. But Or if you're making like a smoothie, like right yeah. then and there, why can't you just push the button exactly. yourself? Exactly. Yeah, it, it, that, that's faster than like getting your phone. You got to get the app out or. So this bad. could actually work <laughs> if they partnered with some of those cocktail, uh, those Bluetooth cocktail makers that we talked about oh, a yeah. couple months ago, yeah. and it was a part of like a margarita machine. Yeah, or like yeah, like a, the frozen margaritas or whatever. And you had ice in there and it crushed the sense. ice and blended the drink. Like that makes sense. But yeah. standing alone is just really dumb. <laughs> um, there was another thing. I th the hoverboards with built-in speakers. Those things are exploding <laughs> anyway. <Yeah. laughs> Adding speakers to the mix seems like a poor idea. Well, and and I hate like, that they're called hoverboards. Yeah. And, and you're like, what are you driving around? And you're just like, you know, throwing music out of your hoverboard. I mean, uh, I don't know. You're gonna get like even more looks. That's there's a particular demographic they're aiming for with those. Oh, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we know what it is. The only hoverboard that's actually hovering is Lexus's mm -hmm. hoverboard. But you need what? Liquid nitrogen and yeah. magnets to yeah. make that work. Super mm -hmm. magnets. I did see this video of this new hoverboard that's coming out. I think it's on Kickstarter right now, but I, I don't remember the name of it but it doesn't use any of that. But it's really big and it's kind of ugly, but it goes much higher than the Lexus one does and actually does hover. So we'll how does see it work? I don't know. The video the video <laughs> tells you very little about how it actually works. Of course. Because they yeah. don't know. <laughs> Typical Kickstarter. It's on Kickstarter though, so if you look on there, you should be able to find it. Okay. Um, other things, um, there was a grill bot, which is essentially a, room, a Roomba for your grill if you're so lazy that you can't even scrape off the grates. Um, there's also a $250 gadget that will look for, test your food for gluten. Um, I know gluten is really a, a rageful topic these days. I don't understand People trying why, to avoid but... it. And well, I mean, there are people with legitimate gluten sensitivities, people with celiac disease, but mm -hmm. beyond that, yeah, I don't see this one lasting. I think it's weird that, well, part of the whole like food thing with like everyone trying to say something's bad, this is bad, that's bad. Like we have been eating this stuff for like centuries now, but all yeah. of a sudden it's like a big deal. And I feel like the life expectancy has gotten longer and longer, so why? Or like everything nowadays you shouldn't be eating basically yeah. just vegetables and that's just it don't eat. so next thing you know it's gonna be don't eat vegetables <laughs> so <laughs> but maybe people died off earlier not just because of harsh situations and saber-toothed tigers eating them and everything <laughs> else but because maybe they ingested some gluten and over time it was way too much <laughs> gluten <laughs> they just built up and they didn't have the uh, the gadget to test no for gluten, you know no. they started kicking off at 29 <laughs> maybe that's what they're aiming for <laughs> I personally love Better some humanity. gluten, so. <laughs> yeah. Gluten is delicious. Yeah. But we understand for our, our, our gluten-sensitive audience out there, um, we, we understand your plight, and we, we do take it seriously. But I feel like a lot of foods, too, like, identify whether they are or are not gluten-free, yeah. so. Well, it's becoming very popular to be gluten-free. Yeah, so why do you need something to tell you whether or not it's gluten-free? Like, if the bag doesn't say gluten-free, then it's not gluten-free. No, yeah. no. And if it's, like, made of wheat, well, yeah. have an probably apple. not gluten free. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> Another thing, there was an exoskeleton, I think you pointed this out, Liam, that makes you feel older or have a disease. Yeah, it was really interesting. It's a whole, like, whole suit you put on with like goggles and everything, and then they can just make like, oh, you have glaucoma, and you, you like your vision is impaired, and then one is like you age 50, 60 years or something, or you have arthritis, and it just starts degrading your joints and everything. It's so interesting. That's bizarre. It's really weird, yeah. I think that would be really good for research. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's true. But that's about it. I mean, or like, you know, say, hey, work out more. This is what's going to happen. And then that's like, oh, my gosh, like, I don't want that to happen. So, right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. So another great site at CES, well, according to the media, at least, was the unmanned marketplace, which is just which is basically like a drone heaven. Um, <laughs> they had the EAR, the EHang 184, which is a human sized drone, autonomous human sized drone that can carry a single passenger for 23 minutes at 60 miles per hour it has gold wing doors it fold, yes. the arms fold yes. up <laughs> totally illegal <laughs> <laughs> well did you see the faa made you, is it the faa yeah they made you is it like, by december 21st i think you had to Rich. register every drone that was like over half a pound mm -hmm. so i don't know if we registered those yet <laughs> but uh <laughs> 
I had to get on that. There was also the Parrot Disco Drone. Flies up to 45 minutes, gets up to 50 miles per hour, and has a 1080p 14 megapixel camera. We just played with your Parrot Drones, mm-hmm. which were the raddest experience yeah. of my weekend. Yeah. Probably my month, which we're being <laughs> <laughs> Period. I didn't. I haven't seen the disco drone yet, but I did see they have the Bebop drone, and that one also has a 1080p camera. But I, I think their drones are really good. I mean, there's a lot of other drone manufacturers out there, and I've tried a couple of them, but none of them are as stable as Parrot, and yeah. their controls aren't as easy. Like one of them, I bought over the Christmas break, and I just could not fly it. Like I just couldn't. I couldn't get it to hover. I couldn't get it to do anything. It kept running into the wall. It had like a <laughs> manual, like its own controller. So I didn't use my phone or anything, but it was just really hard to fly. And then you have the parrot and you just toss it in the air and it just hovers by itself. Oh, and so you cool. just control it when you want to control it. And I think they do a much better job with um, the technology they put into their drones. And mm-hmm. there's cameras like, even the little one, it doesn't have like a recording camera, but it has one on the bottom. And that's the parrot mini drone, right? Yeah, the parrot mini drone. And the camera on the bottom is used to detect it takes a picture like every whatever milliseconds to detect how far it's moved and that, and to detect how fast it's going. That way it can always stabilize itself. I think other drones don't have that. And I think that's one of the advantages that Parrot has. Well, mm-hmm. the Parrots are also pretty cheap. Like the mini drone is a hundred yeah. bucks. Mm-hmm. But to say the price is really competitive. Yeah. It's a smooth fly. I think any, nearly anyone can pick those up. You yeah. Know, go out and get one and be flying it an hour later. I'm probably yeah. going to do that in like, I am absolutely walking out of here getting a drone. Well, it's nice, too, that you can use your phone to do it so you don't have to worry about having, like, another controller with yeah. you or another piece of something to lose or mm-hmm. put batteries in and whatnot. So. Mm-hmm. And for anyone listening, we will be posting uh, videos of our drone play, which I think is a <laughs> new word, drone play, uh, on our website, talknerdy.iu.edu. So another really awesome drone, though, that has come out, and it was announced last year, but I think um, got, got a lot of play at CES, was the Lily drone the lily robotics drone Mm -hmm. it's essentially a selfie drone um (laughs) it can follow you it 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 follows you kind of at a distance Mm -hmm. for about 20 minutes or so that's as long as its battery life is um but it's guided by like a homing device in your smartphone that could be amazing not just for things like extreme sports but anything else you might want to be doing selfies yeah. mm-hmm. all selfies yeah. been, <laughs> all narcissism all the time <laughs> but i've been following the lily drone since it kind of got announced like a while ago and um i mean i want it but i don't feel like it's i don't feel like I'm the right person to have it yeah but it's um you have like this little device it's like a little circle and you just put it in your pocket and then that's what lily uses to track you and to figure out where you're at and um it has all these different modes it can fly in. Like you can put it in like a orbit mode and it orbit around you while you're like snowboarding or kayaking or even just walking down the street or whatever, <laughs> um, or to follow you and basically record you from behind. But it's basically designed to just record all the extreme moments that you're having, basically. And I think it's I think it's cool and it's cute and yeah, it is adorable. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are there are sixty thousand pre-orders so far for the Lily Drone. Are there sixty thousand people out there who are that extreme? Because I mean, if we're if we're thinking about people who are doing interesting enough things to have a personal videographer mm-hmm. essentially following them around <laughs> that number there's definitely 60,000 people who think they're do they think they do oh yeah 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 but i think it's it's <laughs> one of the I guess it's one of the first um, drones that i not not one of the first that has gps in it but one of the first that's really been marketed to like consumers and that yeah. a lot more people know about cuz i mean there's other drones out there that do similar things but no one knows about them you have to go scour youtube videos just to find out what these drones are and lily's been the first one to really market itself for that it's also one of the the prettiest ones all the other drones are kind of very rugged and like all the parts are exposed and lily kind of keeps everything just nice and safe into that one little circle mm-hmm. the circle in the middle um, and it's waterproof. You can throw it in the water. It can fly out of the water and then follow you around and everything. So, it's can you a, imagine it's someone walks movie. out of the water and this thing emerges? <laughs> yeah. and follows like them. you just like you just toss it in the water and then when you start moving, it'll just fly up out the water and start following you while you're like kayaking oh, or canoeing. And that's, and I think that's something that makes it a little bit more um, that's a nice useful for consumers. <laughs> yeah. I think it's easy to take an idea like this to the extreme and say the government's going to use it against us. But I think it could be cool or very useful for things like the police. Mm, on yeah. chases, this kind of thing with, uh, you know, things we've been seeing in society lately, that kind of use. I also wonder if there are any private privacy implications. You're out there thinking you're doing extreme stuff. You're <laughs> going to run into people who don't want to be on your camera. Yeah. I, or they might think it's really cool. One of the two. So. Yeah. It could be one know. or the other. I think it's really cool, and I think that it, it'll do well. I mean, they already had $34 million in pre-orders. Mm-hmm. So I think they're doing just That's fine. That's outrageous. Yeah. I'm excited. I don't know. Maybe we need to find a way to fund a <laughs> show, Lily. 
It can tape us for at least 20 minutes. Yeah, I yeah. think it's really fun. I think that, I mean, people on IU could probably use it too for different projects mm-hmm. and stuff. So. We'll be great for um, any communications video teams, that kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. You know, remember that, um, so we watched the Lexus video for the Lexus hoverboard. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. was filmed with a drone. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. You can see it flying in the background. There's okay. like two drones on both sides flying. Wow. So. Nice, nice. Um, in non-CES news, a recent Nest software update, Nest being the, uh, the uh, smart home device um, thermostat, introduced a bug that crashed the company's thermostats just as winter was kind of truly sweeping <laughs> over the nation. Um, people woke up to cold homes. They had to manually fix their thermostats. Um, it sounds like first world problems. Yeah. <laughs> but it could go deeper than that. Like, you were affected. Yeah, yeah. So it was like two years ago when Nest first came out. I installed like four in our home. I was like, oh, this is so cool. And my family loved it. They can, you know, play around with the settings and change the temperature. But, yeah, when we were in Mexico, we were trying to check, you know, house to house, all disconnected, not no clue what's going on. So our neighbor went over, and all the thermostats were just, like, going up and down all over the place. It was, mm-hmm. it was pretty weird. I don't know. But they occasionally do get those software updates once in a while, and you'll wake up, and your nest will look completely different. But, um, yeah, I don't know what happened over well, it seems like small, they, they sound like small glitches. Yeah. But this is a serious issue, I think, long term for gadgets that are connected mm-hmm. by Internet of, like Internet of Things gadgets. This is a problem. So were they just, like, did the nest just not work? Or was it, like, fluctuating in temperature up and down? It, so it wasn't, like, connecting to the, like, centralized cloud. Mm-hmm. Um, so I couldn't check the temperature, like, even in the house yeah. using, the, like, the app or anything. Um, and it was, like, going down to the, like, away setting but then kind of dipping a little bit lower than that so we, okay. we said that like you know when we're out of the house don't go lower than like 60 mm-hmm. um but it was like dipping down to 55 and things like that yeah, which is kind of you can have like time burst and stuff right. yeah exactly well. yeah or at least it wasn't going up down up down up down because <laughs> your electricity bill might be a little outrageous yeah yeah <laughs> but still i mean anytime you're away you're you're counting on that to kind of take care of things yeah. exactly. you know while you're not home that's the whole point so. yeah, yeah I, I wonder if if these are things we need to start considering when we're buying these products. So I think thus far it's just been very cool. Mm-hmm. And I can be at work and I can I can turn on my thermostat and have it, my, my home be warm by the time I get there. And right. it, it's hard to remember that you know things, things are all functioning on a system and if that system goes down, then... Yeah. yeah. I think it'll get better and better. You know, they, they definitely learn from their mistakes and, mm-hmm. you know, just yeah. don't mess up. <laughs> I just feel like you can't... Get, I can't, you can't freak out over something like this happening because it's technology. Yeah. Like it's going to have a glitch every now and exactly. then. So the nice thing is that they caught it pretty quickly. So yeah. imperfect it people quickly. built it. Yeah. So it's not yeah. going to be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting away from gadgets a bit to talk about the hot new iOS app. It's called Peach. Um, it's the best thing in social media since the last best thing in social media. Um, <laughs> what we seem to know is it's a messaging app. It's kind of as if Twitter and Slack had a baby. Um, but there's no direct, there's no direct messaging. People have to click on your stream to see what you're saying. It's buggy. <laughs> Is this useful? Have you guys played with this at all? I didn't hear about it until recently, but I don't. Why? How's it a messaging app if you can't talk to other people? You can't direct message other people. What's the point of that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you just basically have to like follow people's streams of messages, and then can you comment back to them? Yeah. Yep. So you can like. You can comment on like their statuses, kind of like you know Facebook. So basically, a Facebook wall you're yeah. writing on. Yeah. But I think that. you need to actually click on their stream to see what they're saying. It's exactly. not as if it's There's it's no not all displayed line. for you in the way that a news feed or a Twitter feed would yeah. be. You need to engage with them directly. Yeah. Like your stream is just people's profiles, and like the the most top one is the the person who like most recently posted something. Mm-hmm. But then you have to go into their profile and actually see like, oh, he posted a, you know a picture or a drawing or something like that. And so they could just be rambling on all day. Oh, yeah. No and no one would know. Yeah. Oh. Or if you don't scroll down far enough. Like, you yeah. know, I think about Instagram, and if I haven't been on it for a little while, you know, there's 15 hours of stuff that I'm never going to yeah. get to. Yeah. I mean, maybe it like kind of prevents, because we all have those friends that like tweet too much yes and you see like a lot of their a lot of their tweets and you're like all right can, you know just trying to scroll through all of that you know junk to get to the good stuff right yeah. maybe that's a good way to prevent it it's just like it's all just in one little person's profile but it seems more geared toward your close friends i mean there are yeah. there are probably six people in my life i want to hear from consistently <laughs> and then the rest mm-hmm. of them okay i'll check with you sometimes yeah why not just keep doing group text or or regular yeah. sms yeah I, I don't know and it's 
it's kind of like like you said it's like very buggy too like <laughs> sometimes you tap on something you don't really know what's going on it's like thinking behind the scenes and then it just like crashes or something but um i don't know it just it just blew up like a couple days ago though, i find fl- it seems very flavor of the week to me yeah. but it's fascinating because it has blown up so quickly and the and the tech media has seized on it yeah. and almost it almost feeds on itself like TechCrunch is amazing, so Engadget is amazing, and then all of a sudden it's gone, almost like Meerkat. Yeah. If you remember, Meerkat was here for oh, a month yeah. and out. Yeah. I mean, this does look, I mean, when you click on someone's profile, it does look a lot like Twitter. Like you yeah. just see everything that they're saying in there. Does it? Does this tie back to any other social media? No, no, it's just its own So they have to go thing. in here and post, like, yeah. bedtime or whatever. Yeah. It's kind of cool, though. When you type, like, you can type in here, and what it'll do is it autocorrects to, like, tag your location. Um, I think mm-hmm. there's some other things like draw or uh, what's another one like time and you can post the time or the weather at your like current location or something. Mm-hmm. So there's like these little like quirks and things for that make it kind of unique. But yeah, overall, there's no like tie in with any Twitter, Facebook or anything. Are there any own. age restrictions? I, I forget how I signed up. I think it was just like username, password. That's it. I don't even think I put a phone number or anything. Right. I would almost wonder if this wouldn't be bad for younger I don't know. You think about younger kids. If you lock this off, for instance, at 18, and it was something for younger kids just yeah. to keep in touch with each other, which they do since they mm-hmm. get phones at like seven years old now. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it seems like it could find a place to live. Yeah. You know. And I think it only um, somehow it's only suggesting like friends that it, I must have signed up with Facebook then. I completely forget how I signed up, but I think it like keeps your your like close circle of friends mm-hmm. um, together and everything. But I'm curious to see if this still exists when we meet again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think like half the story is the fact that the the icon is basically an emoji and that's that could be why things yeah. are blowing up. I, I, guess, don't know. <laughs> I think it's funny that it's a peach emoji because no one ever uses it when talking exactly. about peaches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like complete opposite of <laughs> That's probably we need to segue away. We yeah. transition away. <laughs> So on that, um, note. <laughs> on that note, let's get to our sad trombone in technology. What in the world is happening to Fitbit to Fitbit stock? Last oh. week at CES, Fitbit announced the Blaze, which is a fitness-focused mm-hmm. smartwatch. Um, it was immediately panned as a not-so-smart watch with limited apps. Um, the stock fell dramatically, nearly forty percent. I think mm-hmm. it's now. I think that's like a billion dollars in market ca- market capitalization. Um, and just after the holidays, it was one of the most downloaded apps of the season. And now it's trading below its IPO price, which was 20 bucks. Oof. Well, I think Fitbits, like the normal Fitbits, are good, um, I guess, gifts. I feel like a lot of people got them for Christmas. People on my engagement team, like half of us have one. Yeah. I don't wear one because I use my Apple Watch for fitness now, but I, I have a Fitbit. Um, so I feel like those are becoming more and more prevalent. Like people are wearing them because they want to be fitness conscious and it is the new year. So now new year, new me, new mm-hmm. body. <laughs> um, but their, their, their watch, it's not really a watch. I mean, it tells time, so but ugly. that's it. I th- actually, I actually like the you look like of it? it. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think it looks kind of cool. But I don't really care for it. It yeah. doesn't do anything other than the normal Fitbit. Yeah. I mean, you get text notifications and like call notifications, you can control your music, but the Fitbit surged at that too. And I don't think it's really different than that. It just looks That nicer. is simply not good enough. With Apple Watch 2 coming, yeah. if you're gonna look like a watch, you yeah. better perform in the same way. Well, didn't, didn't the CEO of the company say that they didn't want it to do everything the Apple Watch could do? Cause they yeah, felt like... he said it was, it was limited on purpose. Yeah. But I don't believe him. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, well, stock prices are always based on like what people think the future of the company is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and. I would have to agree with the, you know, Fitbit. They're going to slowly be cornered into this like super fitness kind of market that Apple could easily just wipe out. Like you said, you wear your Apple yeah. Watch now, you know, and uh, the just, future of it. It's a colossal strategic blunder. I think they shouldn't have gone down this road. Yeah. Improve what you've got. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or if you're going to make a smartwatch, make a smartwatch. Right. Like you could have. I feel like they could combine what they do with what another smartwatch manufacturer does and have like the best smartwatch out there. Right. Like Apple's fitness could use some improving. They Apple buy them. Like let's do it. So. <laughs> Maybe they will. But it, it's also I got to look at the watch and it was okay. But mm-hmm. if it's gonna be a fitness watch, let it look like a fitness watch. This looked yeah. like it was trying to be classy yeah. and clean. Has and metal bands, yeah. leather yeah. bands, and stuff. No one wants to wear that while they're running or while they're working out. Yeah. 
So I don't know. My friend actually, when when they first had their IPO, he bought a ton of their stock at like thirty dollars per share, and then I it hope he up, sold early. Oh god! No, it went up to like sixty or whatever, and he was like, "I should sell." So he did it, and now it just tanked. He's so <laughs> he's so mad. <laughs> Like, I think he bought, like, $30,000 worth of stock at the beginning, oh, and then man. now it's just, like, gone. <laughs> it's, sell yeah, high, they, kids. Sell high. Yeah. They could have prevented that by just not introducing a smartwatch. Just mm-hmm. don't get into that game. Stick with what you know, and then try to, like, capitalize on that. But yeah. once you start competing with Apple... It, you can't do it. Yeah, and Google. Like, every, every major company that is bigger and better than you in software, why would you just... Try right now. You it's not just a can't do it. Yeah, I and would. Even, I would have hoped they'd be smarter than this. Well, even Pebble's. Well, even Pebble's struggling to stay flow. I mean, Pebble does really well with what they sell, yeah. but like Apple blocks so much of what the the actual watch can do, and you have to have an Android phone to do that. And let's be honest, like the majority of people out there have iPhones, yeah. and so it needs to be iOS compatible to the fullest. And Apple's like, no, you're not. You're not about to outdo yeah. the watch that we have, so we're just going to block all this stuff in your app, and you only can basically tell time. Yeah. So. <laughs> Get your text, tell your time. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You, know. you can read the text if you can't yeah, yeah. to them. Good luck. <laughs> oh, what was Fitbit? So with that, I bring this episode of Talk Nerdy to Me to a close. If you have any feedback, questions, or want to say hi, you can reach out to us online at talknerdy.iu.edu, on Twitter at talknerdyiu, and via email at nerdy at iu.edu. On behalf of Brendan, Liam, and our production crew, this is Janae Cummings. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next month in February. This has been an official production of the IT Communications Office, copyright 2015, the trustees of Indiana University.